right. Um, happy Wednesday. Um, it is April 22nd, 22nd day of National Poetry Month. The like 40, eh, like fifth or something day. This is surely not possible. It can't be the 45th day of the pandemic. And yet, my just have flashbacks of the Kavanaugh hearings. Look at my planner to see what's here. Um, Forty seventh day of the pandemic this seems impossible, and the twenty seventh day of um, continuous learning, remote teaching, whatever your institution calls it. Whew. And we're, no, it's just been a day. It's been like a day I have thought was Thursday all day long. Um, yeah, just a lot going on in the lives of the students and teachers and um, the world. Georgia has been on everybody's mind and lips lately as our governor Kemp, yeah, I, I know and I will say correctly now, um, has decided that Friday we ought to reopen things like gyms and tattoo parlors and nail salons and bowling alleys and that Monday we should reopen um, movie theaters and restaurants and I think for once he's actually gone further than any, well, gone further than anyone else in his party is willing to go. And who knows, maybe he'll walk it back. He's definitely become the lightning rod on the issue. So anyway, good times in Georgia. Pandemic day 40, 47, 47. Right, and so also today, you will notice that I have a, something of a, swollen, bruised nose, a braided nose. And that is courtesy of the 10 month old pup that lives in my house, who stayed up way too late with me last night doing some work for some um, seniors that deserve it. And who I think will be really excited about it. They don't watch this um, and I don't hold that against them. So we stayed up too late and she has been like a little toddler who has needed a nap all day long. And this morning she was eating some mulch and I reached down to get it out of her hand or her mouth and she sat like she was supposed to. And when I reached down to get it out, she like somehow sprung up on all four feet and like slammed her, um, slammed her leash, the like connecting point of her leash right into my nose. It was not a fun moment for either of us. Anyway, so that's what this is about. If I ever go back and watch these again, since the point is charting the passage of time through this pandemic, I will remember. And June will be big and calmer, hopefully. Anyway, so today on a hard Wednesday, a hard and exhausted Wednesday, we have like the moment, I suppose we have all been waiting for the moment where we see if Eve is persuaded by Satan and the serpent to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, or if she decides to continue to be faithful to God and, um, and not. I think we all know where this is going. That doesn't make it any less tragic though. Um, nothing about the story well, the like central line of the narrative about like the and um, build from from the garden, all of that, like anybody familiar with the like with Christianity knows that that's the model and that 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 has to be the model in order to get to um, the necessity of the sun taking on human form and coming down to earth and interceding um, on behalf of humans and their sinfulness 
by sacrificing himself. So like in order for the messianic prophecies to come true and for Christianity to be Christianity, then we all knew, we all know what's going to happen. I think one of the magical parts of Milton is how he manages to make that, like having it spoiled doesn't minimize, spoiled, having it spoiled doesn't minimize the impact of the story. Um, in fact, I think sometimes not wondering or worrying what's going to happen next or what's ultimately going to happen to these characters. Um, gives Milton more room to develop the feeling. And yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm putting this off quite a bit. Um, Cause we've had moments of supreme like poignancy in this poem already. But I don't know that we've had moments that have been or that will have been as like profoundly shot through with tragedy. If you remember back to the beginning of book nine, um, you've, we've got another epic invocation and, and Milton asks, like, begs for inspiration, light, the power of the muse, the Holy Spirit to allow him to tell this story as it turns from things that are happy um, to things that are not. And it's not some other being's unhappiness that we're watching at this point. We're not like watching Satan from a position of like, of judgment um, and evaluation. We're watching humans like doing the human thing. And yeah, I don't know, anyway. It strikes me as very tragic. And I guess I'll start. Busted up nose and everything. So Paradise Lost Book Nine. Um, gonna start with line seven, 78, I think is where, yeah. I'm actually gonna start back a few lines before, just so we have it all. Cause we stopped, <laughs> on, we stopped last night on at, on a cliffhanger, I'm just laughing at like my like inability to speak at the end of, of yesterday's installment. Anyway, we saw, stopped at a cliffhanger where Eve was considering, 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 speaking her consideration, and then the narrator interrupts and describes the action rather than putting us in Eve's mind when she does does the thing. She like reaches out and grabs the fruit and eats. Anyway. <sighs> Milton. All right, ready? Apparently I'm not. All right, so I think I'm going to start around line 766. Um, for us alone was death invented. This is Eve speaking. Were to us denied this intellectual food for beasts reserved? For beasts, it seems. Yet that one beast which first hath taste envies not, but brings with joy the good befallen him, author unsuspect, friendly to man, far from deceit or guile. What fear I then? Rather, what know to fear under this ignorance of good and evil, of God or death or law, of law or penalty? Here grows the cure of all, this fruit divine, fair to the eye, inviting to the taste of virtue to make wise. What hinders then to reach and feed at once both body and mind? So saying, her rash hand in evil hour, forth reaching to the fruit, she plucked, she ate. Earth felt the wound, 
and nature from her seat, sighing through all her works, gave signs of woe. That was lost. That all was lost. Back to the thicket slunk the guilty serpent, and well might. For Eve, intent now wholly on her taste, not else regarded, such delight till then as seemed in fruit she never tasted, whether true or fancied so, through expectation high of knowledge, nor was Godhead from her thought. Greedily she engorged without restraint, and knew not eating death, satiate at length, and heightened as with wine, jocund and boon, thus to herself as she pleasingly began. O sovereign, virtuous, precious of all trees in paradise, of operation blessed to sapience, hitherto uh, obscured, infamed, and thy fair fruit let hang as to no end created. But henceforth my early care, not without song each morning, and due praise shall tend thee, and the fertile bird and ease of thy full branches offered free to all. Till dieted by thee, I grow mature in knowledge, as the gods who all things know. Though others envy what they cannot give, for had the gift been theirs, it had not here thus grown. Experience next to thee, I owe, best guide. Not following thee, I had remained in ignorance, thou openest wisdom's way, and givest access, though secret she retire, and I perhaps am secret. Heaven is high, and high remote to see from thence distinct each thing on earth. And other care perhaps may have diverted from continual watch our great forbidder, safe from all his spies about him. But to Adam, in what sort shall I appear? Shall I to him make known as yet my change and give him to partake full happiness with me? Or rather not, but keep the odds of knowledge in my power without co-partner? So to add what once in female sex, the more to draw his love and render me more equal, and perhaps a thing not undesirable, sometimes superior, for inferior who is free? This may be well, but what if God had seen and death ensue? Then I shall be no more, and Adam wedded to another Eve, shall live with her enjoying, I extinct. A death to think. Confirmed then, I resolve, Adam shall share with me in bliss or woe. So dear I love him, that with him all deaths I could endure. Without him live no life. So saying, from the tree her step she turned. But first low reverence done, as to the power that dwelt within, whose presence had infused into the plant sciential sap, derived from nectar, drink of gods. Adam the while waiting, desirous her return, had wove of choicest flowers a garland to adorn her tresses, and her rural labors crown as reapers oft are wont their harvest queen. Great joy he promised to his thoughts, and new solace in her return, so long delayed. Yet oft his heart, divine of something ill, misgave him. He the faltering measure felt, and forth to meet her went, the way she took that morn when first they parted. By the tree of knowledge he must pass. There he her met, scarce from the tree returning. In her hand, a bough of fairest fruit that downy smiled, new gathered, an ambrosial smell diffused. To him she hasted, and in her face excuse came prologue and apology to prompt, which with bland words at will she thus addressed. Hast thou not wondered, Adam, at my stay? Thee I have missed and thought it long deprived thy presence, agony of love till now not felt, nor shall be twice, for never more mean I to try what rash untried I sought, the pain of absence from thy sight. But strange hath been the cause, and wonderful to hear. This tree is not as we are told, a tree of danger tasted, nor to evil unknown opening the way, but of divine effect to open eyes and make them gods who taste, and hath been tasted such. The serpent wise, or not restrained as we, or not obeying, hath eaten of the fruit, 
and is become not dead as we are threatened, but thenceforth endued with human voice and human sense, reasoning with admiration, and with me persuasively hath so prevailed that I have also tasted and have also found the effects to correspond. Opener mine eyes, dim erst, dilated spirits, ampler heart, and growing up to Godhead, which for thee chiefly I sought, without thee can despise, for bliss as thou hast part to me is bliss, tedious unshared with thee, to and odious soon. Thou therefore also taste, that equal lot may join us, equal joy as equal love, lest thou not tasting, different degree disjoin us. And I then too late renounce deity for thee, when fate will not permit. Thus Eve with countenance blithe her story told, but in her cheek distemper flushing glowed. On the other side, Adam, soon as he heard the fatal trespass done by Eve, amazed, astonished, stood and blank, while horror chill ran through his veins and all his joints relaxed. From his slack hand, the garlic garland wreathed for Eve down dropped, and all the faded roses shed. Speechless he stood and pale, till thus at length, first to himself, he inward silence broke. O fairest of creation, last and best of all God's works, creature in whom excelled whatever can to sight or thought be formed, holy, divine, good, amiable, or sweet. How art thou lost? How on a sudden lost, defaced, deflowered, and now to death devote? Rather, how hast thou yielded to transgress the strict forbiddance? How to violate the, the, the strict fruit forbidden? Some cursed fraud of enemy hath beguiled thee, yet unknown, and me with thee hath ruined. For with thee, certain, my resolution is to die. How can I live without thee? How forego thy sweet converse and love so dearly joined, to live again in these wild woods forlorn? Should God create another Eve, and I another rib afford? Yet loss of thee would never from my heart. No, no, I feel the length of na link of nature draw me. Flesh of flesh, bone of my bone thou art, and from thy state mine never shall be parted, bliss or woe. So having said, as one from sad dismay recomforted, and after thoughts disturbed, submitting to what seemed remediless, thus in calm mood his words to Eve he turned. Bold deed thou hast presumed, adventurous Eve and peril great provoked, who thus hast dared had it been only coveting to I that sacred fruit, sacred to abstinence, much more to taste it under ban to touch. But past who can recall or done undo? Not God omnipotent nor fate. Yet so perhaps thou shalt not die. Perhaps the fact is not so heinous now, foretasted fruit, profaned first by the serpent, by him first made common, and unhallowed ere our taste. Nor yet on him found deadly, yet he lives, lives as thou saidest, and gains to live as man higher degree of life, inducement strong to us as likely tasting to attain proportional ascent, which cannot be but to gods or angels, demigods. Nor can I think that God, creator wise, though threatening, will in earnest to destroy us his prime creatures, dignified so high, set over all his works, which in our fall for us created, needs with us must fall, fail, dependent made. So God shall uncreate, be frustrate, do, undo, and labor lo lose, not well conceived of God, who though his power creation would re could repeat, it would be loath us to abolish, lest the adversary triumph and say, fickle their state whom God most favors. Who can please him long? Me first he ruined, and now mankind, whom will he next? Matter of scorn, not to be given the foe. However, I with thee have fixed my lot, certain to undergo, like doom. If death consort with thee, 
Death is to me as life. So forcible within my heart, I feel the bond of nature draw me to my own, my own in thee. For what thou art is mine. Our state cannot be severed. We are one, one flesh. To lose thee were to lose myself. So Adam, and thus Eve to him replied, O glorious trial of exceeding love, illustrious evidence, example high, engaging me to emulate, but short of thy perfection, how shall I attain, Adam, from whose dear side I boast be sprung, and gladly of our union, hear thee speak, one heart, one soul, and both, whereof good proof this day affords, declaring thee resolved, Rather than death or aught than death, more dread shall separate us, linked in love so dear, to undergo with, go with me one guilt, one crime, if any be, of tasting this fair fruit, whose virtue, for of good, still good proceeds, direct, or by occasion hath presented this happy trial of thy love, which else so eminently never had been known. Were it I thought death menaced would ensue this my attempt, attempt, I would sustain alone the worst, and not persuade thee, rather die deserted than oblige thee with the fact, pernicious to thy peace, chief, chiefly assured, remarkably so late of thy so true, so faithful love unequaled. But I feel far otherwise the event, not death, but life augmented. Opened eyes, new hopes, new joys, taste so divine that what of sweet before hath touched my sense flat seems to this and harsh of my experience adam freely taste and fear of death deliver to the winds so saying she embraced him and for joy tenderly wept much one that he his love had so ennobled as of choice to incur divine displeasure for her sake or death in recompense for such compliance, bad such recompense best merits. From the bow she gave him of that fair enticing fruit with liberal hand. He scrupled not to eat against his better knowledge, not deceived, but fondly overcome with female charm. Earth trembled from her entrails as again in pangs, and nature gave a second groan. Sky lowered and muttering thunder, some sad drops wept at com completing of the mortal sin original. While Adam took no thought, eating his fill, nor Eve to iterate her former trespass feared, the more to soothe him with her loved society, that now as with new wine intoxicated, both they swim in mirth, and fancy that they feel divinity within them, breeding wings wherewith to scorn the earth. But that false fruit far other operation first displayed carnal desire inflaming he on eve began to cast lascivious eyes she him as wantonly repaid in lust they burn till adam thus gan eve to dalliance move eve now i see thou art exact of taste and elegant of sapience no small part since to each meaning savor we apply and palate call judicious i the praise yield thee so well this day thou hast pervade. Much pleasure we have lost while we abstain from this delightful fruit, nor known till now true relish tasting. If such pleasure be in things to us forbidden, it might be wished for this one tree had been forbidden ten. But come, so well refreshed, now let us play as meat is after such delicious fare. For never did thy beauty since the day I saw thee first and wedded thee, adorned with all perfections, so inflame my senses with ardor to enjoy thee, fairer now than ever, bounty of this virtuous tree. So said he, and forbore not glance or toy of amorous intent, well understood of Eve, whose, eyes, whose eye darted contagious fire. Her hand he squeezed, and to a shady seized, hmm. I kind of like squeeze, but okay. Her hand he seized, and to a shady bank, thick overhead with verdant roof embowered, he led her nothing loath. Flowers were the couch, pansies and violets, and asphodel and hyacinth, earth's freshest, softest lap. 
there they fill there they their fill of love and love's disport they took largely of their mutual guilt the seal the solace of their sin till dewy sleep oppressed them wearied with their amorous play soon as the force of that fallacious fruit that with exhilarating vapor bland about their spirits had played and inmost powers made air was now exhaled and grosser sleep bred of unkindly fumes with conscious dreams encumbered now had left them up they rose as for as from unrest and each the other viewing soon found their eyes how opened and their minds how darkened innocence that as a veil had shadowed them from knowing all was gone just confidence and native righteousness and honor from about them naked left to guilty shame he covered but his robe uncovered more so rose the dynite strong herculean samson from the harlot lap of philistian delilah and waked shorn of his strength they destitute and bare of all their virtue silent and in face confounded long they sat as struck in mute till adam though not less than eve abashed at length gave utterance to these words constrained o eve in evil hour thou didst give ear to that false worm of whomsoever taught the counterfeit man's voice true in our fall false in our promised rising since our eyes opened we find indeed and find we know both good and evil good lost and evil got bad fruit of knowledge if this be to know which leaves us naked thus of honor void of innocence of faith of purity our wanted ornaments now soiled and stained and in our faces evident the signs of foul concupis concupiscence whence evil store even shame the last of evils and the first be sure then how shall i behold the face henceforth of god or angel erst with joy and rapture so oft beheld those heavenly shapes will dazzle now this earthly with their blaze insufferably bright oh might i here in solitude live savage in some glade obscured where highest woods impenetrable to star or sunlight spread their umbrage broad and brown as evening cover me ye pines ye cedars with innumerable boughs hide me where i might never see them more but let us now as in bad plight devise what best may for the present serve to hide the parts from each other that seem most to shame obnoxious and unseemliest seen some tree whose broad smooth leaves together sewed and girded on our loins may cover round those middle parts that this newcomer shame there sit not and reproaches us as unclean so counsel he and both together went into the thickest wood where soon they chose the fig tree not that kind for fruit renown but such as at this day to indians known in malabar or deccan spreads her arms branching so broad and long that in the ground the bended twigs take root and daughters grow about the mother tree a pillared shade high overarched and echoing walks between there off the indian herdsman shunning heat shelters in cool and tends his pasturing herds at loopholes cut through thickest shade those leaves they gathered broad as amazonian targ and with what skill they had together sewed to gird their waist vain covering if to hide their guilt and dreaded shame oh how unlike to that first naked glory such of late columbus found the americans so girt with feathered cincture not naked else and wild among the trees on isles and woody shores thus fenced and as they thought their shame in part covered but not at rest or ease of mind there sat them down to weep nor only tears rained at their eyes but high winds worse within began to rise high passions anger hate mistrust suspicion discord and shook sore their inward state of mind calm region once and full of peace now tossed and turbulent for understanding ruled not and the will heard not her lore both in subjection now to sensual appetite who from beneath usurping over sovereign reason claimed superior sway from thus distempered breast adam 
estranged in look and altered style, speech intermitted, thus to Eve renewed. Would thou hadst hearkened to my words and stayed with me as I besought thee. When that strange desire of wandering, this unhappy morn, I know I not whence possessed thee. We had then remained still happy, not as now, despoiled of all our good, shamed, naked, miserable. Let, a, let none henceforth seek needless cause to approve the faith they owe. When earnestly they seek such proof, conclude, they then began to fail. To whom soon moved with touch of blame, thus Eve. What words have passed thy lips, Adam severe? Imputest thou that to defend my imputest thou that to my default, or will of wandering, as thou callest it, which who knows but might as ill have happened, thou being by, or to thyself perhaps? Hadst thou been there, or hear the attempt, thou couldst not have discerned fraud in the serpent, speaking as he spake. No ground in enmity between us known, why he should mean me ill, or seek to harm. Was I to have never parted from thy side? As good have grown thee, as good have grown there still a lifeless rib. Being as I am, why didst thou not the head command me absolutely not to go, going into such danger as thou saidest? Too facile then thou didst not much gainsay. Nay, didst permit, approve, and fair dismiss. Hast thou been firm and fixed in thy descent, neither had I transgressed, nor thou with me. To whom then first incense Adam replied, is this the love? Is this the recompense of mine to thee, ingrateful Eve? Expressed immutable when thou wert lost, not I, who might have lived and enjoyed immortal bliss, yet willingly chose rather death with thee. Am, and am I now upbraided as the cause of thy transgressing? Not enough severe, it seems, in thy restraint. What could I more? I warned thee. I admonished thee, foretold the danger, and the lurking enemy that lay in wait. Beyond this had been force, and force upon free will hath there here no place. But confidence then bore thee on, secure either to meet no danger or to find matter of glorious trial. And perhaps I also erred in overmuch admiring what seemed in thee so perfect, that I thought no evil durst attempt thee. But I rue that error now, which is become my crime, and thou the accuser. Thus it shall befall him who to worth in women overtrusting lets her will rule. Restraint she will not brook, and left to herself, if evil thence ensue, she first his weak indulgence will accuse. Thus they in mutual accusation spent the fruitless hours, but neither self-condemning, and of their vain contest appeared no end. All right, book nine, out. Sadness, division. Yeah, all right, we'll just pick up with book 10 tomorrow.